All right, this is part two. Um, I've been talking about uh, the species uh, concept, what's called the biological species concept, and how it focuses on reproductive isolation as a way to uh, keep um, species separate. And so we're going to, I'm going to make a list here of the different um, ways in which species are kept isolated. Uh, so number one is what we call habitat isolation. And I'll come back and talk, give examples of each of these um, categories in just a bit. Uh, the second mechanism is what's called temporal isolation. Temporal referring to time or timing, and in this case the timing of, of uh, breeding or reproduction can, might be different between species. Uh, a third category is behavioral isolation. A fourth category is mechanical isolation. And the last category is what is called gametic isolation. And so gametic referring to the gametes or sperm and egg. All right, so I'm going to come back here and talk about briefly each of these uh, different mechanisms. and give examples, or at least one example. Um, habitat isolation uh, just refers to the fact that two similar species um, might actually reside relatively close to one another, but they're in different habitats. So, um, for example, the garter snake, there are several species uh, one species is actually aquatic, and the other is terrestrial, and so obviously those two are not going to meet, um, and therefore not going to reproduce. The second category that I call temporal isolation refers to the fact that some similar species might breed at different times of the year. Uh, for example, the spotted uh, skunk. There are, there's an eastern and a western species in the United States. And they their ranges actually overlap somewhat, um, but they reproduce at different times. So the eastern um, spotted skunk actually uh, reproduces in late winter, whereas the western spotted skunk actually reproduces in the late summer. So even though they might be both species are present in the same area uh, where their ranges overlap. Uh, they're not reproductively isolate, um, active at the same time. A third category that can help maintain isolation is behavior. So this is number three. And this is uh, best illustrated in birds. Birds tend to have very specific uh, mating rituals. Sometimes uh, it's simply um, through specific songs uh, where a member of a certain species will recognize that song and therefore recognize the individual that's producing that sound as being of the same species. 
but in addition, there are rather elaborate courtship type of uh, displays or rituals uh, that some species perform um, that are going to enhance uh, recognition by, by the same species. A fourth category is mechanical. Isolation. And mechanical just refers to the structure of the male and female reproductive system, particularly the external genitalia, in which um, structurally they're not similar, so they, they can't physically uh, mate. And a last category. is gametic isolation and this is best seen in organisms that reproduce for example in the ocean such as sea urchins. There are different species of sea urchins and they actually um, they will release their sperm and egg into uh, the ocean, so it's, it's easy for two species, um, for those cells to intermix, but, for example, we have the purple sea urchin, and it produces sperm, and the opposite, of the female will produce eggs. Because of specific molecular um, interactions between the proteins on these two uh, cells, only sperm from the purple sea urchin is going to fertilize an egg from the purple sea urchin. We cannot fertilize egg from other species just because of, of the um, proteins that are there and how they bind to one another. Okay, that's the end of... Uh, second uh, video.